So someone once said that in the 21st century, deleting history is more important than creating it. It's a joke. So while that might be true for some of our perhaps web browsing history, but in today's terms, in terms of technology, it has definitely um, made a lot of changes with, re with regards to the various sectors that we have seen pertaining to be in transportation in the way whereby we have uh, been using Grab or Uber or even in, in travel with regards to Airbnb and how that has disrupted uh, the tourism industry. So, so similarly, what I'll be sharing today is that I'll be sharing with you about how in my uh, past decade being in the financial services sector, how I've witnessed some of these changes um, with regards to how FinTech has, has developed and shaped some of these things and I'm honoured to be here to share this with you in greater detail. So, first and foremost, FinTech. This is a blended word between the two words financial and the word technology. And according to the Forbes World FinTech report, this definition that they gave is that FinTech is the delivering of financial services to consumers through a better experience by using digital technologies to reduce costs, increase revenue, as well as to remove friction. So, in terms of the examples of FinTech, let's take a closer look. So, in fact, many of us, perhaps, we are in the midst of uh, being surrounded by FinTech without even knowing it. So, if you have ever checked your bank account balances through your mobile devices or even tablets, or perhaps done a fund transfer to your friends, using um, your smartphone applications or even uh, making a payment to the, uh, the hawker centers who are increasingly using QR codes to receive cashless payments or perhaps even making uh, bill payments via mobile applications then you have definitely uh, been uh, embraced by the advantages of the tech. So definitely, there are plenty of benefits of FinTech and today I'll just be touching on a few of them. So first and foremost, definitely the convenience of FinTech is something that we are enjoying as consumers. But beyond the convenience, what we have also seen is that there are also the emergence of new currencies such as uh, Bitcoin or even uh, Ethereum. And these are just um, the different currencies that are emerging in the world of FinTech. And as well as is the creation of jobs, definitely this is something that uh, is very exciting for many of us who have yet to embark on, into the workplace because this means the demand for uh, smartphone applications or even to a new shift in economy towards blockchain technology, this will uh, inevitably create new jobs for uh, the new economy. And the third C, uh, this will be with regards to crowdfunding. So the thing with crowdfunding is that this is something that is definitely not new to many of us. We will have come across platforms such as uh, Indiegogo or even Kickstarter, whereby um, the crowdfunding platforms would allow uh, us to be connected to, to these platforms whereby we are able to uh, present a good proposal or a business idea and this can be connected to people with the funds and then from from these funds and this platform, we can bypass traditional mediums such as borrowing from the bank. And as a result of that, we can see that there is a greater, uh, that has been new products that are being developed as well as uh, being brought to consumers alike. And for even young innovators without a good credit standing, this also means that you will be able to bring your ideas to life with the creation of crowdfunding platforms. So with global fintech investments, definitely this is something that is uh, in, is growing over the years as well. Since 2010, as you can see, it started with uh, just a mere 1.9 billion, but in, in fact in 2017, that number has grown to almost 27.4 billion, with a bulk of it in lending as well as payment services. And in terms of the future development of fintech, definitely there will, uh, given the fact that there has been a growing uh, capital that is pouring in into this sector, there will be a continuous growth. And one of it perhaps 
that is the most exciting for many of us uh, when you start to earn your first dollar, when you start to build your own portfolios. Something that you might also want to be thinking about is uh, there is the talk about the rise of robo-advisors. And with these robo-advisors, what this means is that rather than traditional fund managers who are able to uh, manage funds as well as to deliver a requirement of return, right now we are already seeing the emergence of these uh, robo-advisors, two of them being the largest, which is Betterman as well as Wealthfront, but, but there are more than uh, close to 20 billion of assets under management. And these robo-advisors, they will be able to help consumers achieve a, a good rate of return and perhaps at an even lower uh, cost to the investors. And of course, in terms of how medical services are being delivered to uh, consumers, right now for my work, some of the work that we also do for corporations is ensuring that companies are able to provide their employees with uh, employee benefits. So one of the most commonly provided benefits will be uh, medical benefits. And right now, more and more companies uh, are also moving towards a medical consultation via a smartphone application, whereby rather than having to spend an hour waiting in the clinic, to see the doctor and then thereafter half an hour more to get your medication. And in the whole process, you might even catch more diseases in the clinic from other sick patients. Now with the online consultation, this means that uh, at the comfort of your home while you're resting, it's a better use of time to uh, focus on your recuperation with the medication being uh, delivered to your home and to focus on uh, resting and recovery. So, with this shift in how medical services are being delivered to consumers, this is also perhaps a change that will be more uh, commonly seen in the next few years. Meet Emma. This lovely lady, she's not my girlfriend, but she's actually a digital assistant. So Emma was actually a result of uh, collaboration between OCBC and Google. So OCBC in 2018 was the first bank that actually uh, put together this collaboration and with this AI chatbot, it is able to better answer any uh, worries that consumers they have pertaining to their uh, perhaps mortgage. So at the point when you are working or you're ready to perhaps buy your first property, you could ask chatbots, hey, how much do I need? Uh, in terms of the for my down payment, what is the loan that I can secure, so and so forth. And we see that chatbots will definitely start to replace simpler functions of uh, traditional uh, bankers who are doing this uh, mundane role. And similarly, Jamie is also a familiar face. So Jamie is uh, also a chatbot that we see on a lot of uh, government uh, websites, and they are there to to answer any of our questions twenty four seven. Uh, pertaining to the queries that different ones of us may have. So the emergence of more digital assistants, this will definitely be more prevalent. So on top of that, I think definitely FinTech is also something that as it develops, it is not one without limitations. So cybersecurity, I think in the recent years as we've seen in the news, definitely we have uh, read whereby there is uh, where there are increased instances of online scams or perhaps even uh, so-called security measures that uh, corporations are also facing. So this will lead to a greater concern among consumers and users alike. And with this limitation, this will also mean that in the new economy, there will also be a greater uh, demand for specialists in this field of cybersecurity. And what I mentioned earlier uh, with regards to Emma, as well as Jamie for the digital assistance. I think this is also something that uh, ties in very closely with uh, human bias. Ultimately, for chatbots, these are still uh, chatbots that are programmed by human beings. So, the question that I would like us to think about is why are the two chatbots that we saw earlier, both of them are Chinese? Why are both of them female? Why are both of them uh, pleasant looking? And these are some of the things to get us to think about because ultimately when this human bias are uh, subtly being programmed into these chatbots, would this then perhaps cause us to cloud our judgment 
in terms of if we start to agree with how an assistant should look in terms of our hiring decision, would, would this also mean uh, when we are hiring, when we are doing certain things, this will become a uh, so-called uh, norm that we begin to assume to be an industrial standard. So in our midst, I'm sure I see many bright young faces and definitely I'm sure there will be uh, many innovators amongst us and perhaps there could be a new, the next Jack Ma, the, the next Mark Zuckerberg. And more so, I think, in the world of programming, perhaps that's where we also need to have uh, more uh, female found tech founders so that there will also be a greater balance of voices in the development of fintech. And of course, being inundated with the world of uh, financial products, definitely we see more and more complex financial derivatives that are being created uh, from time to time. So with, uh, like I mentioned about cryptocurrencies as well as more and more different uh, derivatives, I think all the more there is a need for consumers to be alert as well as to make sense of what do these various asset classes mean to us. So I think the need to have a trusted advisor uh, for one to be able to have a personal trust in all the more that makes a greater need of having that uh, trusted advisor all the more relevant. So in conclusion, I think definitely in this society where we are moving towards uh, of a high technology, the question is, are we also becoming a low-touch community whereby if all of us really are becoming so accustomed to merely just communicating with uh, chatbots, with machines, that we have a loss up on what it means as a community to have uh, that interaction with one another. So perhaps I think there is still a certain draw with regards to working with uh, human beings with one another. So, I, so to be reminded that ultimately we should not become a high tech and low touch community, but we should all the more embrace that personal touch that is present. And personally, in my work uh, that I deal with, uh, since I'm client facing, I deal with corporate clients, I deal with private clients. And even though many of them do have access to this uh, new artificial uh, intelligence alternatives, but very often they still prefer to have that uh, personal touch because I think what robots can't replace, uh, like what was pointed out earlier, is that the fact that relationship is something that cannot be replicated from an AI chatbot. So I think in this world, as we continue to uh, move towards, I think this is something that we should continue to cherish and see that that's something very important. So with further developments, Consumers and SMEs will definitely get to benefit from the uh, lower costs that consumers can enjoy as well as the greater convenience. And smaller companies will also continue to enjoy the collaboration that they get from the bigger players with the rollout of our technologies. So as Albert Einstein has said, that the human spirit must definitely prevail over technology. So, uh, what I would like to end on with is just to say that even uh, for uh, different ones of us, whether or not in the future as you uh, go on to pursue your various fields of interest and dis disciplines of study, whichever roles that you may be doing in the future, may I encourage all of us to continue to uh, embrace what makes us human, what makes us uh, a society which is the human spirit which is the most important, that is love that is passion, and that is inclusivity as a society. So with that, I urge us to uh, march towards your dreams, and uh, I thank you all for your time. Up and on, team.